This video explains how to draw interactive bar plots using the Plotly package in the R programming language. The tutorial was created in collaboration with Kirby White, who is a researcher at the Seattle Pacific University and an expert when it comes to interactive graphics in R. So without too much talk, I'll head it over to Kirby. Hey everybody, this is Kirby White here to do another Plotly tutorial. Today we're going to talk about uh, bar plots in Plotly, which can be a little bit more complicated than other graphing libraries. Uh, let's go ahead and jump in. Today for this tutorial you're going to need two packages, the Plotly package of course and then Tidyverse, which actually contains several sub packages, uh, some of which we'll use. You can install them with those first two lines of code and then load them with these two. Uh, like I said, bar plots in, in Plotly can be a little more complicated and it, specifically Plotly wants you to do some data processing before you get to the graphing stage. And bar plots are very often used to display summary information. Um, and so that's why it's a little bit more complicated because you have to do that summarization in your data set before passing it to the graphing portion of it. For our example data, we're going to create three different uh, data sets, and they're all coming from the diamonds data set that comes with the ggplot2 package, which is a part of the tidyverse. And this is some of the pre-processing that we're going to do. So we're going to take the diamonds data set, which has about 50,000 rows, and then we're going to, to, we're going to summarize the data set into, um, and extract the mean price, the mean table, and the mean depth for each grade of cut. So this is like a fair quality cut, an ideal quality cut, um, so on and so forth. Table and depth are two different metrics about the geometry of the diamond that was cut. And it's okay if you don't know what those are, we're still gonna visualize it uh, just as an example. So here's what the DF wide object looks like. It's a very small and concise uh, table um, of summary information. The second one that we're going to do is DF count, and this is where we're going to do something similar with the diamonds data set, but we're going to look at every combination of cut and clarity in the data set. So I'm going to go ahead and run that, and uh, here's the full code if you need to see it. And here's what that looks like. So for the fair cut diamonds, we want to see how many of those had a clarity of I1, and there were 210 of those. Well, of the fair cut diamonds, how many had SI2 clarity? 466. And so this is, again, another summary table. And this one in particular is the type of processing that you need to do in Plotly that you would not need to do in ggplot. The final uh, data set that we're going to create is called dflong, and it is really just a, a pivoted version of the wide data set. So again, here's the wide data set, and here's the exact same information, but in a long format where we have uh, multiple rows for each uh, cut quality of diamond. Okay, that's it for the example data. Let's go ahead and jump in. Here's the first basic plot that we're going to and you can build this plot by calling the plotly function. Now watch out for this underscore that's in here. And then what we're gonna do is say that we're gonna use the DFY data set. And along the X axis, we're gonna use uh, cut, which is a categorical variable. There's five different cuts. And then Y, this is where we're gonna encode um, the price, the average price of each cut into the length of the bar. Now in plotly, we have to specify the type of graph and that is gonna be bar. So I'll go ahead and run this and we can see it over here in our viewer. Here we go. So we have, we can see the five different cuts, fair, good, very good, premium, and ideal, and the length of each bar corresponds to the average price of diamonds with that particular uh, type of cut. Now, if you want to display multiple metrics, we can also do that by creating what's called a grouped uh, bar chart or bar plot. And I'll go ahead and run this while we talk through it. So it's um, uh, really similar to our first one. We're using the DFY data set. We have cut, uh, but now we're putting depth as our Y axis. 
and still a bar chart and we give it a name in this one and this is really so that the legend knows what to call it. Now to add our second set of bars we use this add trace function. Now a trace in Plotly is essentially another way of saying add um, uh, you know add information to this graph and so where we have depth in our first uh, chunk of code we have table in our second chunk of code for the y-axis and we give that a name of table and you can now see that over here so we still have the same cuts and we have two different bars for each one so this this um, type of grouping allows us to really easily compare depth and table within the same cut if we need to compare depth or table across cuts, we can change the way that these are grouped. Now you could do it with this wide data set, but that's actually where we'll switch to using the long data set. And this is an easier format um, for creating a plot like this. So we're using the DF long and I've filtered that to exclude the price information. And so you can see the code for it and here is the plot and this makes it much easier to compare the depths um, across different grades. So here you have a bar for ideal and a bar for fair and you can see how those uh, differ from each other more easily across cuts when you group it like this. Our next type of plot is called a stacked bar chart and we'll go ahead and run this and this is best for um, comparing proportions across groups. So in this instance, what the question that we're trying to answer is um, for each clarity of diamond. So when a diamond comes out of the ground and it goes to the jeweler and the jeweler looks at it and they establish the clarity, well, we can then ask, well, what what quality cuts do those diamonds get based on their clarity? And so here we can see the proportions of each one. So because this is the tallest bar, this tells us that SI1 appears to be the most common clarity of diamonds, closely followed by VS2 and then SI2 uh, and then VS1. So you can tell from the height of the bar how many of each clarity are in there. And then the colored segments within that bar tell you about the proportions of cut within each level of quality. And so this is great. It, it tells you multiple pieces of information. It is not ideal for comparing the proportions across clarity though. And I'll, I'll demonstrate another version of this chart just to illustrate it. And here is where we're using the DF count data set. And we still have to do more data processing. And this is what I was talking about earlier with Plotly is not always the easiest uh, for this sort of thing. So we're taking the DF count we're grouping by clarity. And then what we're doing is calculating the proportion of each cut within each clarity. So we're taking it from a raw number like 216 or 466 and turning it into a percentage. And this gives us across all the clarities, the bars will be equal heights. And now it's very easy to compare proportions within each one. And so we can see within the IF clarity, which is the um, highest clarity, the best one, we can see that more than 50%, in fact, 67.7% of those end up being cut into ideal diamonds at the end. So this is sometimes called a 100% stacked uh, bar chart. And this is great because it, it gets rid of that uh, proportions problem that we had in the first one where the, the bars were all different lengths. So we'll wrap up this tutorial with a few relatively easy modifications at this point. So if you want it to be a horizontal bar chart instead of a vertical one, the easiest way to do that is just switch your X and Y um, arguments. So we've done that here and now we have bars that are going side to side instead of bottom to top. If you want to display the value of the bar along with the bar, we can add that with a um, text argument here. And so you can see over here on the bar chart, we've got the same bars that we had before. In this case, we're just looking at the average price for each cut quality again. But we've got the, the actual average price listed on the top here. And we did that by adding a text argument. And then I used this paste zero function 
to take a dollar sign and um, concatenate it with the price. Now I rounded the average price down to two decimal places so that you didn't have you know eight or nine or fifteen um, uh, decimals running off to the end. This is just one way of of formatting it so that it looks like a dollar formatting. And now with text position, there are a few different variations of this. I think inside, outside, and auto. Um, are, are perhaps the, the three most common. And I chose outside for this one so that it was listed on top of the bar. That's it for this tutorial. I hope it was helpful. We went quick, so feel free to watch it again if you need to see some of that. And I will look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks. Thanks a lot once again to Kirby White for his contribution to this video. In case you want to learn more about this topic, then you may check out the Statistics Globe website, because on the Statistics Globe website, Kirby White has recently published a tutorial in which he's explaining the content of this video in some more detail. In case you have liked the video, I would be very happy if you leave some positive feedback in the comments. And make sure to subscribe to the Statistics Globe YouTube channel to get notified in future when we are releasing new videos on the channel. That's it for this video. Thanks a lot. See you next time.